There is now a peril lurking among us, a malevolent force that threatens us all. It is a cursed video game, an entity without a known counter. This curse can be transmitted through the mere act of playing or interacting with the infected game. No one is immune, young or old, gamer or non-gamer. It lies in wait in the back of arcades, abandoned garages and warehouses. Up until now, it has haunted a select few, but its reach is extending. Don't fall to the darkness of unawareness. Know this game. Know its name. Know it is called... Okay, so today I'm going to try to create a public information film in the style of a kind of 70s or 80s public information film. Uh, these used to be created by the government to uh, inform you of uh, of issues of the day, in this case AIDS, which um, obviously was a massive issue at the time. I was 17 uh, and this information film scar scarred me and many others for life. Um, really uh, kind of deep and gloomy and upsetting. It's got lots of there is now a danger. It's got lots of um, really gloomy effects, sound effects, really gloomy voiceover and some kind of uh, sombre music uh, and deeply upsetting. So I'm going to try and create something in the style of this, uh, but instead of um, it being a very, very serious subject of AIDS, I'm going to uh, base it around uh, a purportedly cursed video game called Loebius. Lo Loeb being the... Um, the the demon that's supposed to live inside AI and the point of that is I'm going to try and create it all in AI or for the most part in AI so um, so we've got the video here I'm going to take uh, so what if we go down to uh, the information here you usually get a transcript depending on where you're getting the the video from in this case the whole of advertising so you can go over here to the right you've got your transcript uh, you can toggle your timestamps on or off, so you want to toggle them off. Uh, and then you want to uh, just, I'm just going to grab this. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this into chat GTP. I'll talk about this in a minute. Um, so I'm going to try and rewrite it. Uh, rewrite the following. Um, uh, replacing uh, the ads. Well, actually. Um, Focusing on a cursed video game as opposed to the AIDS virus. So let's have a look. Let's paste that in the transcript. So that's not bad. Uh yeah, I mean, this this doesn't fit, but, you know, so you can rewrite that uh, and get something decent out of that. Because uh, really, the video, we want to be looking at the time uh, stamp, and this is like 50 seconds. So you want to keep it under 50 seconds. Um, if, you know, public information films were, for the most part, under a minute. So um, the other thing we want to do is we want to kind of locate some music uh, in the style of the, the public information film. So I've had a bit of a look on Pixabay. Um, which is great for for uh, no copyright music, as it says here. Uh, this is by Shadows and Echoes. Thank you. It, it's not perfect, but you know this is kind of a prototype uh, AI um, video attempt. So um, so we've got this, and we can cut this down to this is about one minute. We've got a nice. Um, <laughs> Apologies if that just deafened you. So it kind of ends at a climax here on about a minute, so we can probably fade it in and keep it under uh, around about 45 seconds. So we've got the music. Obviously, you have to hunt around for this. Um, you know, this is like all the um, the tags we've got here. Uh, horror scene, dark, movement, duration, theme. Uh, movement, is that correct? Okay, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um. And so, yeah, Pixabay, good, good choice for music. Have a look on Pixabay. Uh, so we've got our um, script here that we're going to ad adapt and adjust. Uh, but so the other thing is that what I've done here is, um, and so this is to get the style of the uh, 
the actual the video camera they've used, the video footage they've used, so we get the exact style of the 1980s video. So I've just written here, I'm going to get make a one minute public information film based on the dark abandoned video arcade, uh, scary shot, similar to the, so I've, I've cited the um, AIDS monolith film. 1980s advert format, dark and grainy, what camera, film stock and colour grade should I use throughout? Um, so ChatGTP has given me a huge amount of information here, you know, really useful if you are actually going to try and uh, make this film uh, in reality. Um, so this is too much information for what I want to... Uh, feed into mid journey which I'm going to take it to to create an image. Uh, for the sake of the tutorial choose the camera and film for me uh, single words and short phrases separated by commas um, so yeah and so it's given me Arriflex, film stock, simplify suggestions so you can use this um, which we'll use this over in mid journey to uh, to create our images of the, um, the, the video arcade so we've kind of got what we need now I just need to rewrite this um, and then formulate this into a mid journey prompt um, and then what we can do is I'm oh, sorry the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this script and get it run it through uh, an AI voice simulator which is fascinating so I'll uh, move on to that stage okay so we've got the we've got the script now so uh let me just show you, I've got it in Notepad. So if you take the actual script out of chat, GTP, and paste it into Notepad, it removes the formatting, which is quite useful uh, from the perspective of then pasting it into, pasting it in, into uh, words. You can uh, you can basically then just adjust it normally. Um, so I've just adjusted this. I've cut some of this out. I've cut this line out, which I quite like this line, so I've kept it uh, at the bottom. Um, but it's probably a little bit too fruity for uh, the uh, kind of serious tone of the public information film that I'm trying to emulate. So we can take this and then if we go to this amazing thing which is 11labs.io voice library so um, you can just work your way through here and try and find Yesterday's home runs don't win today's games. You, you can just try and find a voice here basically and these are all AI which I find quite amazing you can also generate voices if you've got the rights to a voice um, but usually you can find you can find a voice that sounds a bit like uh, the, the actor you might have in mind or or the type of voice you want so I mean this actually says great for old documentary voiceovers um, logic will get you from A to B imagination will take you everywhere I'm not sure but let's give it a go so it's Carl uh, let's have a look so I need Carl here. Uh, okay, yep. Yeah. And then we want to change this uh, and paste in our new script. Okay, so let's paste this in, and then the generate was just hidden behind the voice preview, so I don't know how to. Can I get rid of that? Okay, that's how you do it. Right, so uh, let's just generate this then. There is now a peril lurking among us, a malevolent force that us threatens all. It is a cursed video game, an entity without a known counter. This curse can be transmitted through the mere act of playing or interacting with the infected game. Okay, so uh, so that's this, sometimes you've got kind of uh, trying to imagine what the voice will sound if when this is read with the right cadence. And so with that in mind, you can actually go to this. Um, and this is where you have to do a bit of your own uh, acting. So if I try to do a little bit of uh, John Hurt from the original from the original public information film, we can uh, well, let's give it a go. Uh, I can probably so you can record it here. Yeah, you need, as, you, as long as you've got a mic plugged in, let's just record. There is now a peril lurking among us, a malevolent force that threatens us all. So I've already messed that up. So let's stop that. Oh no, hang on. And you've got to watch your accent with this as well. That I find that if you um, you've got to try and keep your accent clean, or unless you want an accent on on it. But yeah, it'll pick up accents. There is now a peril lurking among us, a malevolent force that threatens us all. It is a cursed video game, an entity without a known counter. The curse can be transmitted through the mere act of playing or interacting with the infected game. 
So I've I've done a couple of records. So um, it was picking up my accent again. So I'm I've tried to do a John Hurt accent, uh, which you know. Um, there is now a peril lurking among us, a malevolent force that threatens us all. It is a cursed video game, an entity without a known counter. This curse can be transmitted through the mere act of playing or interacting with the infected game. Okay, so I'm happy with that, uh, apart from the one line, which, so I'm going to have to, you can retake that line and obviously edit it back into your footage. So, um, it's got my accent again on, uh, ha Haunted but a Select View. Um, okay, so there's some way of downloading this. I'm going to find it. Okay, so if you go over to history, uh, you'll find all the voices you've you've uh, utilised, uh, you've created. So, um, so then if you select it, you can download it. Uh, you know, which is amazing. Although I can see down here that uh, I've got another three thousand characters available to me. So I'll have to redo a line. But other than that, kind of uh, yeah, sounds good. Okay, so now I am aiming for a kind of tracking shot. So what I've done here is, you know, to fill up the, the, the time with kind of gloomy video related images. Um, so what I've done in Discord is I have basically just taken a, a core image. If we go back to the core image, the initial image, is it there anyway? So the initial image, I don't think that is the initial image that's actually that's the initial image so this is kind of front on which is which is quite useful obviously for for what i'm attempting which is a kind of tracking shot although it tends to do a pan instead of a tracking shot uh if that's the correct term but it it, it doesn't tend to track track along as if it's in the same position on rails um but anyway let's see so all all i've been doing is i've just i've just left and right um well in this case i've done a left uh generation in mid journey which is then giving me this pillar and then obviously then you choose you press left again and then you choose the image and then you press left again so what you end up with is i've gone left and i've gone right separately um so i've started going right here so you end, you should end up with a kind of ultra wide screen image um so this is the right hand side image so uh if i so you won't be able to see that uh, if I go image canvas size and then just kind of make it double the size it is um, and let me just pull out of there oh, pull out would be good so it's kind of stuck in the middle because I'm an idiot so let's just undo that we want to do image canvas size so that's the far left one, so we want to keep that far left, make that 4,000. So I've just kept it on so that it obviously it's pushed over to the right hand side. Um, and then if we open, if we open the far left, which is this one. So in theory, I should be able to cut this out and then paste it so if we take the opacity down on this i can move it into position really so i'm trying to match up okay so it does match up okay now i can take that back up to 100 yeah so now we've got a kind of ultra wide screen image really this guy so i wanted it to i wanted it to have a central focus so it's dark at either side and then let's crop this down Uh, yeah, and then so what I want to do now is I'm going to take this into runway ML uh, So that'll be the next stage Okay, so we're, we're in runway ML so let's just go to the dashboard. So we want we want gen 2 uh, No, we want gen 2 text image to video So let's get our new ultra wide arcade saved as JPEG um, and then what we can do here is we can put in some camera motion. Uh, I don't know what that means. Uh, so we can, well, let's let's move it here. Okay. So 
So we want to move it. Um, we want to, to pan it helps a bit as well. I think. I mean, it is a tracking shot. We don't want to roll it, and we don't. We might want to. Do we want to zoom a little bit? No. Okay, so it's only going to give you four seconds, but um, well, let's just run it and see what happens. Okay, generate four seconds. Okay, so unfortunately that has tends seems to have come out completely nuts. It's having a lot of trouble with this right hand side. Um, so let's give that one star. Uh, uh, composition, warping or morphing. Okay. Uh, so let's how can we go back and do this again? Can we go back and do this again? What's this thing here? Should we press this here and see what happens? Ah, okay. So we don't want we don't want it to pan. I would suggest let's put that in at naught. Uh, and I'd probably say twenty. Uh, Ten is max. I see. So you can only go right. You can only, obviously only go right or left. Uh, so let's just try that and let's generate that again. Okay, view latest. Okay, so the good news is just with the with a horizontal pan, is it a pan? Um, the results are much better. And the thing is that I'm really looking for here is just that it's bringing the scene to life. So obviously if you had put all these uh, arcade cabinets into something like Unreal and then you've kind of, uh, you've randomized the lights on the consoles coming on and off um, or the cabinets coming on and off, that's a huge job. So really now I can take this and move to the next stage. We've got a, you know, obviously this looks a bit weird over here, but I'll show you what I'm going to do with it next to turn it into a tracking shot. Okay, so I'm in Premiere Pro 2021, which um, I'm not sure is the right version. I'm trying to, I don't, they update it every three minutes, so I'm just trying to use a version that I know how to use. So let's have a look at, let's get the image dragged in. We've got this, drag it in there like so. Okay, so we've got the image into Premiere Pro. So what I want to do is I want to um, I want to make it uh, TV frame size, so um, four by three frame size. So if we have a look at digital TV standards, we can go six forty four eighty. Shall we try six forty four eighty? Let's try six forty four eighty. So because obviously we want to be uh, we want to have a fixed frame size that's that's basically panning across this image at the same time that it's panning anyway. Uh, you'll understand what I mean in a minute. So um, if we go to sequence and sequence settings, uh, and then we go to frame size 640 by 480. Okay, so we don't need these black bars i mean they look cool but it doesn't fit with the rest of the video but i'll fix those uh, we'll, we'll f stretch it in a minute um so as we can see now because we zoomed right in we're getting a very small amount of zoom so what we need to do is um this is the bit which confuses me okay so it's not actually that difficult i just have to go to effect controls uh, so what we want to do is if we go back to the start of this sequence and then we click on these little timelines um, we want to the position is important so what sorry what's going to happen here is because we've clicked on these little clocks um, we will it will animate so it'll keyframe effectively so we want to, from the start position, we want to get right over to this side of the image. So what I'm doing is just dragging this value here. Do we want to go left to right or right to left? We probably want to go the other way, don't we? Let's go the other way for a change. Okay. Just going to take that logo out, which we know it's... Uh, mid um, what's the name of the software again? Uh, we know it's 
the software, the amazing software, which uh, is called Romway ML. So I just don't want to keep this in for the purposes of this video. Uh, so let's start it there. Let's keyframe it now. So and if we go to the end, we need to then move it right the way across to here. So theoretically, that should okay. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, the the huge benefit of you know we can see that it's warping slightly, but the huge benefit is it's giving it's giving life to some of these lights, but obviously it's moving very fast. Uh, so I wonder if there's a way of fixing that. Okay, so what I have done here is I've just added a directional blur, so I've just opened up the uh, variables down here. So that should probably be ninety degrees if it's going left to right. Uh, and I've just added a blur length for one just to kind of stop this um, just to help a little bit with the, the jitteriness of it actually so one last thing I have done before uh, outputting is so I want it to obviously be quite a slow tracking shot so uh, and it's kind of it gives it a weird cinematic effect the warping oddly but and also we've got this really nice it blacks out there at the end in a sort of demonic way right so all I've done is I've just gone to uh, speed duration I put it down to 30% speed obviously you know choose whichever speed you want um, but the really important thing here is you want to put in optical flow you want this drop down otherwise it, it just goes insanely jittery so now I can output this uh, relatively smoothly I've still got my directional blur in and then we can move on to the next step Okay, so uh, from a zoom perspective, let's just have a little bit of a look at this. Uh, so I'll show you how to do the, the video effect afterwards uh, with, the, with a free uh, video overlay. So, um, so kind of the way that I've done these two things is there's, there's two separate ways. So what I've done is if you've got a decent image that's been generated, you can keep zooming out of it um, and then what you can do is if you come into runway ml and use gen 1 not gen 2 so gen 1 is um is image to image and it'll interpolate so if you put in interpolate if you can spell um so you know i've done this before where uh, sorry what i mean is I've, I've brought in these images um and it'll give you as long as you've got kind of two images that are similar um It'll interpolate between these so this is kind of zooming out uh, and it, this doesn't always work out I mean um, so the reason that I created the uh, static on this So that static effect is there to cut between two zooms because it doesn't, uh, it won't zoom smoothly all the way down this corridor regardless of how many images you give it. So this isn't, you can fiddle with this and you can get a kind of de half decent zoom on the go. Uh, but if I go back to, um, so I think you have to go to assets uh, and then Gen 2. So Gen 2 is a is a different kettle of fish entirely in that uh, gen 2 you can if you keep so the way I've done the, the gen 2 um, hang on a minute let me try and show you an example uh, if I can find an example so gen 2 so this is really nice um, and what this has done is gen 2 has basically generated uh, the zoom from a static image so if you've got a decent image you're happy with in in um, mid journey got that in the end if you've got an image you're happy with in mid journey 
you can then uh, so something like this you can start zooming out of this you see because then effectively once you've zoomed out far enough uh, you can get uh, upscale it and then you can use Rombo ML to zoom into it so and that should give you a fairly good result so um, and then what I have done then is obviously you want it to, to hide uh, to skip between these uh, so I've got the Ed's monolith video as a uh, as a reference kind of mood reference um, so if you go into YouTube you'll find free glitch footage uh, I'll try and put the links in if I can find where I got them from just turn that down before we die so yeah so that gave you the, the name of the link um, yeah so these are glitch effects so with those sounds and that footage, you know, you can then basically create, uh, you can cut between the, uh, you can hide the the edits basically, so that it looks like a continuous shot. Um, and so that's kind of the way that I've, I've done those. Uh, so that's that. Let's go on to the next step. Okay, so next up we want to start creating the AI sound effects for the public information film so um, I mean there's plenty of sites you can get sounds from like free sounds uh, this type of thing but obviously we're trying to do this all AI so a bit hunting around I found my edit uh, which is interesting uh, so 11 labs is also creating a, a AI generated sound section of their website uh, it's not quite happened yet so um, but I mean so this is the prompt I've given them an 80s computer video game being played in a large empty room uh, so, I mean, it, it's it's not bad. Yeah, that one's come out weird. I'm not sure what that one's about. I mean, they're not bad. I mean, it does sound like this an arcade from the eighties. Um, it's just sometimes a bit ambiguous. Um. So the other one I found is Stable Audio, which uh, has been rated uh, as excellent by a lot of people. Um, so I started with the sound effect of a busy video game arcade in the 1980s. And then I actually got ChatGTP to generate a prompt up here. Uh, so this, is, this prompt is quite lengthy. Consequently, it's, it's created a file which is, which, a WAV file which is called which uses all of these words as the name of the file and consequently you can't open it because uh, obviously it's too many um, characters within the file name and you can't rename it. I'm sure there is a way of renaming it. Anyway, shut up Andy. So, um, so these, these are again... I mean that sounds like... yeah... Sounds like a like an ice rink or something. Um, I mean, so you get some interesting effects. I've, I've used this one. So what I've done then is I've taken these over to Premiere Pro, uh, and what I've started doing is so I've just started mixing them in. Uh, let's make sure this hopefully won't deafen everybody. Uh, so I've just started mixing them in. There is now a peril lurking among us, a malevolent force that threatens us all. So you can hear the, the weird um, kind of uh, spectrum type data noises in the background. So I've just layered all these sound effects down here. Um, and what I'm doing here is... It is a cursed video game. So I've got the the audio, the music and the voice track in. So this is kind of what I'm timing it in by. Um, and as you can see, I've also Attempt left... Getting with the infected game. No one is immune, young or old, game or... So I've left gaps where I need to start filling in these sections because uh, I don't currently have anything in there. So I'm going to get some more zooming footage out of Rome ML. Um, but and also I've cut out. I've, I've also edited some of the voice track because there was some. I've edited part of the voice track to remove some some um, elements that just didn't seem to fit from a public in information. So you know, you just all I'm saying is you need to kind of keep editing all the, all the time, keep iterating it. Uh, and then also I've, I've moved the music track along and faded it up so what I've done is I've shortened the music track slightly and faded it up and the reason behind this is because then we get if I can just find it so we've kind of got a nice ending up going up to 50 seconds which is the same as the original 
Don't fall to the darkness of unawareness. Know this game. Know its name. Know it is called Lobius. So, you know, you've got a nice ending there, which is kind of what I want to work around. Uh, but yeah, so that's it for the for the sound section, really. So let's keep moving. Okay, so just a quick note here that if you are, uh, let me have a look. So if we um, if we just do a very slight zoom in uh, Rome ML, let me see if I can find the previous. Uh, well, squeeze the ML. Um, so if you try and zoom and track within Runway ML, it's obviously having to generate loads of extra information and then it's stretching and warping and in some cases anyway. But uh, so let's go back. Can I go back? Okay, so uh, the thing here is that if you if we're going to if you just do a very slight zoom, so this is the um this is basically the one where it's, I've tried to track and zoom within Runway ML. Uh, and you can see this is turning into some sort of giant box. Um, I mean, it's still amazing. But So if you just do a very slight zoom, then you can basically use your position and scale to, to zoom and track within the shot. Um, there is... In Premiere Pro. The only slight downside is that with less movement of the with with less movement of the camera within Rob ML, you're getting less animations. The only thing that's really animating here is there's a bit of movement here on the screen, so it kind of looks like a static image, which is the only downside. But just a, a tip, really. Okay, so next up we're in Vid.io, so uh, this is kind of an online video editing tool, from what I can tell. Uh, just log in. I just logged in using my Google account, and um, so I'm going to just have a fiddle with this. The, put some filters onto this rather alarming uh, AI image of Lobe, which has come out of guess what from ML. So this is quite uh, terrifying. This is oddly the last thing that uh, Runway ML spat out before my credits ran out. So. Maybe there's some sort of mysterious meaning to that. Um, as you can see, utterly terrifying. Um, all I've done is I've asked Midjourney to create a picture of uh, of Loeb. I've actually used an existing picture of Loeb so that Midjourney knew what uh, the she looked like. The um, apparently the spirit that looks in AI. Um, created these four images, ran them through Mid. Uh, runway.ml and spat out that utterly terrifying image. Sorry, I also added a text prompt about it zooming and uh, burning in hell. Okay, so uh, let's make a new project here. This, so this is back to vid.io. So I need to try and make it look like it's, it's going to be playing on the video screen, which it sort of does, but not quite just yet. So let's get this in. I don't actually know how many credits I've got on this. Um, so now, once you've loaded this and you get filters down here, so again, uh, I don't know whether the, um, some of these I'm guessing must be AI. Uh, so we really want a video filter uh, effects. We don't want color. Actually, we could color grade the whole thing eventually, but um, so that's quite interesting. Night vision. Uh, a CRT, yeah, maybe VHS overlay. Okay, so that just gives you the. I'm not sure which one of those to go for. Shall we try that one? Um. So how do we do it? So that's not really doing much, is it? Okay, so I fiddle with this, but anyway, you can see. Uh, oh, I've done something weird now. So 
here we are cleaning so I mean this is all AI stuff so this is again magic tools back to filters if I can actually get this back to the start so I have a fiddle with this but um, you can see again this is another powerful tool and I'll show you how I'm going to fit this into the video Now, just to quickly note that uh, if you go up to done, then it gives you the option to uh, export your video. I'm assuming it gives you, I'm assuming it gives, it's just giving me four seconds at a time, which is all I need. So, yeah, there we go. Okay, so I'm just finishing up now. So what I've done is I've kind of, it's very much a case of, it's very loud. Um, very much a case of plugging the gap uh, here with regards to all the shots. I've just used a lot of Rumba ML shots. Um, and so I put in static as well, which I think I've shown you before where the statics come from. Uh, I've color graded it in VED and added the VHS effect, um, again, which I've kind of discussed. So the the color grading is on the panel just in front of the, um, the filters in VED. Um, I brought it back into Premiere Pro because obviously we need to just slightly adjust the sound to make it a bit more uh, 90s. So what I've done here is I've added a, a distort to this. Um, I've added a, a distort to it, the soundtrack, um, but this, the distort is really powerful. Um, so like if we just like if I actually turn this channel off, uh, there's got to be a way to turn that off. Mute. So it lies in wait in the back of arcades, abandoned garages, and where. So I think that's a bit too strong, really. So what I've done is I've just uh, I've copied the audio and just added another audio track, the same audio track above it. This has no effects on it, and so kind of this is slightly louder than this. So it's just kind of slightly overwhelming it. Uh, with regards, just it's just lowering the um, the volume and the intensity of this effect. Uh, so uh, I'm just looking at. I've also added a FFT filter. Don't know what that does, uh, but it told me to do it in a tutorial, so I've done it. So another thing is I've just added some. So this is non AI. I've added some um, some sound effects uh, from Shigaborg. Uh, so these three sound effects are from Freesound, so you know the, that's a great resource as well, Freesound, so I've just added these in for the static effects. Uh, and that's really it, so that's kind of wrapping it up really, so um, yeah, I hope it's been educational. <laughs>